first beauty con. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Can I call you by your birth name, Kareem? Yes, sir. Okay. You are a Grammy nominated multi platinum rapper, singer, songwriter, producer, and record executive. And you reached out to us yeah. to come to BeautyCon, which I love a person who knows what they want, but what made you want to be here today? Because my whole team is full of women. From, you know, from my assistant, to my manager, to my, you know, the whole team. I feel like, um, you know, women take care of you, you know, and they make sure they do it from the heart that they love. And also, I came from a single mother home, so she took care of me, you know, my whole life. Um, so I always had that, you know, they say boys grow more love for their mother. Yes. And the girls grow more love for their father. Sure. And that was a mother's baby. Got it. And ever since then, I just saw a lot of potential in just having women work for me more than guys. Partnering with you. Yeah. Well, or, yeah, definitely. Well, good for you for recognizing where the love and power comes from. Yes. So, you've been hustling since you're 15. I read a lot about you. You've been really putting in your dues, you've been putting in the time from the Bronx. Who here is from the Bronx? Come on, New York. Who from New York? Come on, let me see those. You started out doing rap battles, selling DVDs. It took you a decade. Grinding, grinding, self-producing, pounding the pavement. Two decades. Right? And you essentially at some point came down, had multiple offers from Bad Boy, Rock Nation, MMG. So I want to know, when you were a kid, did you see yourself in the future sitting here today with all this ice, all this fame, all this success, all the accolades? Did you, did you have a clear vision of yourself as you are today? Um. This ice really represents frozen tears. Like, it's basically, you know, a lot of people don't see what goes on behind the success. You know, there's a lot of, you know, sleepless nights. There's a lot of, you know, things that people don't see. They only see the success. And I feel like, you know, for all the young artists, for everybody out there trying to be entrepreneurs, whatever it is, you know, it comes with a lot. Because if it was easy, everybody could do it. It's a lot of work. I tell people this all the time. If you play in the NBA, there's 28 teams. And there's 14 to 20 players on every team. If you look at hip hop, you can count rappers in your hands, about 10 of them. That's hot. You know, female artists, forget about it. They're like a needle in the haystack. Yeah. So, Anybody's out there trying to do it. If it was easy, anybody can do it. You have to do it if you love. If you love the grind. The love, yeah, overpowers everything. It's the, it's, it's like, even if tomorrow I didn't have to, or what have you, for me, like, the grind is a, it's almost like a part of my, how can I explain it? It's like my creativity. Like, what I love to do is create and make And it means more. Yes. When you stand in there and you win an award, or you stand in there and you got your family with you when you look left to right, it means more to you know, let people know, like, we came from here and now we're here. Putting in your dues. How many here are putting in their dues? Yes? You gotta keep going, right? So, we're here to talk about women. Yes. And. One of the things I think is very interesting is I feel like we're in a new era in hip hop. I feel like we're self-possessed women, people like Cardi B, people like Rihanna, people like Beyonce, um, people like Meg Thee Stallion. There's this new era of confidence, this new self-authorship. And one of the things that I'm enjoying so much is watching male artists not only um, participate in tracks and videos, but really get behind it. I mean, talking about that, I was just at a video shoot with Megan Thee Stallion and Nicki Minaj yesterday. So that's how much 
my support. Who wants to be at that video shoot? And... You know, so um, Cardi B, um, she just DM'd me the other day. She said I was the first celebrity she ever met. Because I remember her from a decade ago, too. So I know the struggle she put in. Everyone knows we love and also survived Cardi B. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but you know what? She, she came from... You know, from the Bronx. You know, the Bronx is the mecca of hip hop. She's the hustler. Yeah, the not original nobody. hustler. Yeah. But it's real for her. Yeah. She loves that grind, and she's such a grinder. I love her. Yeah, definitely. She inspires me so deeply. No, definitely. I mean, coming from the Bronx, you get criticized. And, and, and it's like coming from, you know, when, 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 when like Michael Jones played for the Bulls and you're trying to play. So it's like, you got Slick Rick around the corner. You got Kuro Latifah right there. You got Remy Martin right here. You got, you know, you got, you know, KRS One. You got Cold Crush Brother. The history goes deep in the Bronx. So for her to make it out of there, it's a beautiful thing. So shout out to Cardi B. We're so, so, so happy for Cardi B. And um, she gave us one of the most prolific keynotes we've ever had in the history of BeautyCon. She gave a 45 minute sermon, basically, about financial literacy yeah. and why women needed to really own financial literacy and their wealth and generational wealth. And for that, um, listen, she blew my mind. She's, she's an incredible energy in this universe. And she's only 25, right? So let's just like, really looking at yeah. what I love is people like you all, like, that's what I'm saying. The new era of hip hop is about this new feminism. It's not cool to hate on a woman, to, to disregard their talents, but I love that the new era of hip hop is about supporting that female fire. Definitely, I mean, she, um, she reminds me that um, hustle always gonna beat talent, but the talent don't work hard. Hustle will always be talent, oh. always, always. So you, you are raised by your mother, yeah. And how would you describe your mom? A soldier. I feel like, you know, um, when we came here when I was 13, she um, she came here with my father. She didn't know English just like me. And um, she was working at this chicken place about like 18 hours. They were slaving out like these ladies, immigrants out here. And I remember just, you know, my father couldn't even take it. He went back to Africa. So my mother was still holding it down. She said, I'm not gonna go back. Cause if I go back, my son is not gonna have the same opportunity. Well, you can tell I'm the biggest out of Africa with so much talent out there. People gotta shine the light out there cause there's so much talent. So she was like, I'm not leaving. She sacrificed and, and you know, sleepless nights just like me and just, you know, working hard. I remember one day walking into where she worked at. She, was, uh, she used to work at this chicken place. She used to come home and smell like chicken. You know, but, um, and, I, and then I walked to the back. And when I opened the door, she was, she was praying and crying. And I was like, nah, this gotta stop here. And right after that, that's when I just took over. I feel like being raised by parents who come from another country, you know, having another language spoken in. Shout out to all the mothers out there sacrificing yes. all the babies. Mega shout out to all of them. I think about my parents all the time because they came here, you know, their teens, they spoke no English, they were Muslims in a country that had no love for them. And, um, you know, when I was a teenager, I didn't understand them, but as an adult, I really think about that sacrifice of what it takes to raise your child in a foreign land. And uh, it's it's one of those things that like, if, if you are raised that way, there's something different about you, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, I think it's a culture shock when you come from a different place. And besides that, it's more about, you know, adapting to the, to the new platform you're in and to this and that. But you got to keep your soul in, in, the, like in the game. It's, when you like when you come from a different culture and this and that, you don't live by the same rules. But also, when you have a strong mother at home, it, 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 it's like you have it in the backbone. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a lot of people don't have that. That's, that's where all of my confidence myself comes from is uh, I have an extremely strong mother and uh, she puts everyone in her place. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're a Moroccan? Yeah. 
Yeah. You are a proud Arab American? Yes. You, um, you've been to Africa many times. Got yeah. a number of videos there. You rocked a, I feel like everyone was talking about you, you rocked a Dapper Dan, uh, like, like sort of traditional, like, look.